I did something bad. I did something very interesting. Let me just balance this coffee on the stack of packages to make you as nervous as possible. This is a book haul. I haven't done a book haul on my channel in a little bit. My life is books. I love books. So what did I do? I bought books. This is a pretty collective book haul. Uh, welcome to my channel if you're new here or if you're coming back. Hi, I've missed you. My name is Emma. Most of these are from the book depository closing phenomenon that has happened, altered the nature of our bookish world. <gasps> Don't worry. <laughs> leaves it there. I have a bunch of packages to open and I'm so excited because I've been waiting to rip these open but I've held myself back so we could do it together. The theme for this video, most of it I think, is me wanting to have a good time reading. I'm in my busiest school era yet probably. Um, I'm drowning a little bit and I just wanted happiness, light, wholesomeness, romance, fantasy to get me through while I am grueling. Package number one. <gasps> oh okay oh they gave me a seahorse like an under the sea they gave me like an under the sea bookmark that is cute i'm gonna keep that one this one i got is the undertaking of heart and mercy by megan bannon yes when i asked you guys for like wholesome cute recommendations you recommended the undertaking of heart and mercy i know absolutely next to nothing about this one let's do a smell check Mmm, could have some more flavor. A little bland, but good wind creation. This is a romance. I think she runs, she runs an Undertaker's, which is like so fun. She's been single-handedly keeping Birdsell and Son Undertaker's afloat. She's having an okay time doing this undertaking job all by herself, but there's this man named Hart. Her name is Mercy. He's a marshal and he patrols these lands. It is a fantasy as well, I think, because he's patrolling these lands it's magic. There's magic involved. He has a hard time, but he always shows up at this, I don't know, undertakers and like makes life difficult for her. After a run-in with Mercy, Hart finds himself penning a letter addressed simply to a friend. Much to his surprise, he receives an anonymous letter in return and a tentative friendship is born. Little does Hart know he's bearing his soul to the person who infuriates him most. So this just sounds really interesting. I'm not one for contemporary romance. I love fantasy romance. There needs to be more science fiction romance. Can I say that? If you have any science fiction romance regs, leave them down below because love in space is just more interesting, more fun. I'm really not a fan of like too many contemporary romances, so there always has to be something a bit more there, a bit more to the plot, a bit more to be interested by, and this one has graves, corpses, magic, and um, I guess secret identity pen pals, so I'm all for it. Let's read the first sentence. It was always a gamble, dropping off a body at Birdsell and Son Undertakers, but this morning, the Bride of Fortune favored Hart Ralston. Okay, which pile should I pick from? Probably this one, because this is, yeah, it's not a good idea, is it? We'll just keep doing it. <gasps> it's Frost Heart, Frost Heart by Jamie Littler, 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 I don't know. Look at how cute this is. It's so shiny, oh my gosh. Okay, so Frostheart, I have heard of this book for so long on BookTube because it is Gavin from How to Train Your Gavins. Like, is it his favorite book? One of his favorite books? He's the one I always hear talk about it. I love Gavin, he is hilarious. He is a light in the world. You should check out his channel. But he always talks so fondly with so much love about Frostheart. You know my addiction to winter and frost and ice at this point so frost heart just like had to come into my life because i mean look at it and then the cover oh i love these i ooh, hello so you follow this little young lad his name is ash he's far out in the coldest part of the monster infested snow sea so i don't know if he's been abandoned by his parents or if they've just perished or gone missing but he's waiting for his parents he's like anakin it's anakin skywalker on the snow sea and he only has his yeti to kind of be his guardian keep watch over him so the book is called frostheart because there's a ship called frostheart that ash eventually boards because he finds out that he has magical powers or something and he's taken away on this ship on an adventure. I think along the way he wants to find his family though, which is always just heartbreaking. It just looks so beautiful. Look at this. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. Chapter one, they shouldn't have been out on the snow. Okay, also I didn't know this was illustrated. It was with illustrations. Mm, okay, very inky, very inky. Very thick inky smell. Frost heart looks so cute. I'm gonna save it for winter. 
obviously. This one is very thin. Let's see. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know this was this small. Interesting. Okay, this is I Have the Right to Destroy Myself by Young Ha Kim. Okay, remember how I said everything was going to be wholesome, lovely, rainbows, sunshine, just feeling good? Pretty much everything is except for this book. I looked at my cart when I was checking out and I was like, this is too much. <laughs> I need a little bit of darkness in there. I just need, I'm really drawn, really drawn to dark, traumatic literature about trauma in general. So I picked out, I have the right to destroy myself. This one had been on my wish list for so long, but I decided to pick it up. This is another piece of South Korean literature and this one is quite dark because I think the narrator, he helps people commit suicide. So he wanders the streets, he haunts the lost and wounded of big city soul, suggesting solace in suicide. It also follows two brothers who are just called C and K. Yeah. Um, so they're two brothers and they fall in love with the same woman so it follows these two plots and i'm guessing they're gonna come together in some way shape or form um it's described as dreamlike and cinematic it sounds not really a good time but the back says it's ultimately about human connection and like talking to people making connections so i don't know the back blurb just really caught me i don't encourage murder i have no interest in one person killing another i only want to draw out morbid desires imprisoned deep in the unconscious this lust, once freed, starts growing. Their imaginations run free and they soon discover their potential. They are waiting for someone like me. This one smells a little bit beachy, very light scent. So that is, I have the right to destroy myself. Very different. Okay, let's move on because I know there's other happiness in, in these boxes. Okay, so another one. Ooh, ooh, okay. Oh, this one is also cute. Okay, basically what I do with the book depository bookmarks, I like cut off the ad parts and then I just have really cute bookmarks. Okay, so the book is A Touch of Darkness by Scarlet St. Clair. Okay, so the thing about this one, I've already read it. I've already read it, but I listened to the audiobook version a couple years ago and I wasn't 100% sold. I remember liking some parts of it and some aspects of the romance, but I remember not really liking our main character who is, oh my god, not Ophelia, I almost said Ophelia, Persephone, because A Touch of Darkness is a retelling of Hades and Persephone from Greek mythology. And I know this series has gotten so much longer and like I keep seeing more books in the series pop up on my Libby app. So like I wanna keep going, but I need to reread the first one and I just thought I would pick it up. A Touch of Darkness is set in like our world, so it is, I guess kind of like a contemporary retelling but it's a bit different because in this one Hades like the gods I think are pretty much celebrities and I think he runs a nightclub yes he does um so he has built a gambling empire in the mortal world and his favorite bets are rumored to be impossible all I remember is that one night she goes to the gambling den she loses she has to sign you know she loses a bet she has to sign a contract and her life has changed for forever I think the writing was okay there's been a lot of Hades and Persephone retellings recently coming out I remember wasn't thrilled with neon gods I feel like I liked a touch of darkness better so We'll see how that goes. Maybe I can make a whole video reading retellings because I've read at least three now. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. The coffee is good today. You can relax now. Oh, okay, interesting. So this one, this is A Single Thread of Moonlight by Laura Wood. This one, I also... No, I think what this one was, I saw, because I have a lot of you as friends on Goodreads. Did you know Goodreads has a cap on the number of friends you can have? So I had to, like, I can literally, I don't think any longer accept friend requests, but you can still follow me if you want. But anyway, I saw one of you. Who knows who you are? Who knows if you're even watching this? I think you put as, like, want to read or read A Single Thread of Moonlight, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. So I picked it up because it's a Cinderella retelling. I don't know why but the fairy tale retellings that i read i really like fairy tale retellings but the best ones are always they always end up being cinderella i don't know what happens but like whoever gets their hands on cinderella like they're always the most fun to read and they always end up being the books i like the best so a single thread of moonlight by laura wood laura wood has a bunch of other novels out i did start an audiobook by her a few years ago dnf'd it just wasn't really in the mood but this one sounds 
hopefully promising. We have Iris who runs away and she gets lost in the streets of London. Now she makes dresses for the richest ladies in the country instead of being one herself. Cold-hearted, dazzlingly handsome, Nicholas Winter arrives at Iris's door with a proposition for revenge. So he's like, oh, do you want to get back into the society you ran away from? We don't really know why she ran away. I'm suspecting something awful garish happened and she was forced to kind of leave, but he's like, do you want to get, do you want to get back at them? And she's like, yes. So it looks fun. It's sparkly. Oh, and you know what? The print is really spaced out. That's very good for my eyes. Mm. This one smells good. Oh, and it starts with a quote from the Count of Monte Cristo. So you know it's gonna be a revenge story. Once upon a time, there was a girl whose life was a dream spun from golden thread. Okay, pretty basic for sentence, but it's okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, it's Bewitched. Bewitched by Laura Falassa. Um, I hardly ever buy new releases. And when I do, I'm just like, oh, this is exciting because Bewitched literally, I think just came out. It is another fantasy romance. So Laura Thalassa is the author of both the Bargainer series and the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse series. I've only read book one of the Bargainer and I really liked it. This one, I think it's set in like our world or the contemporary human world. And we have this girl who goes on a vacation, I think. She goes on a quest through the wilderness in South America. She's a witch, so she's not human. She has dreams of getting into this witchy school, so like she wants to be she wants to be accepted. She's working hard and on one of her quests through the wilderness, she accidentally opens the tomb of Memnon. Yes, Memnon the Cursed. <laughs> Who mistakes Selene for his long dead wife. I really like the name Selene. I really like the name Selene. Probably just because I'm a fan of like Sailor Moon and the Lunar Chronicles, but anyway. So he's like, oh my God, you're my long dead wife. And she's like, no, I'm not. Um, and he's like, no, you are. And worse, you're the wife that cursed me. So I don't like you. Ultimately, she does get accepted into her school of dreams, but then witches start dropping dead and she begins to get blamed because obviously Memnon is showing up being like, I hate you, I married you and you cursed me. So things are a bit disastrous. Anyway, it just sounds fun. Oh, <sighs> a bit bitter. Oh, we have a map. So that is Bewitched. You have bewitched me, body and soul. <gasps> okay, this one is from Chapters, and sorry, I just saw it. Yes. <laughs> yes. You can tell I've been waiting for this for so long. Okay, this is Kitchen Princess Omnibus 2. Here is the deal. Who, whoever the hell recommended me Kitchen Princess like last year, thank you because I loved this manga to pieces. I loved it to pieces. So I ordered Omnibus 1. I read it like exactly a year ago now. I wanna reread it. I wanna continue it so bad. But because I am cursed to only like mangas that are rarely reprinted, I have had a journey trying to find Omnibus 2. So when I finally saw it was in stock at Chapters, I was like, okay, snapping it up. And also thank you to those of you who recommended it to me in like the latest video. Um, right Stuff. It's called Right Stuff and they have like a bunch of manga because I think I found Omnibus 4 on there. So the journey continues for me, but at least now, at least now I have number two. Oh, this is so cute. This is a food manga. It's a cooking manga. You follow Najika. She's an orphan and she wants to get into this like very prestigious school um because she thinks that her flan prince is there and the flan prince is this young kid who gave her his flan when she was grieving the death of her parents it changed her life it was like the salvationary moment for her and she's like i just want to say thank you so she enrolls in this school and she like literally became so gifted at cooking so sweet so wholesome so fun very down to earth and like the relationships were really special it tackles topics like eating disorders grief um coming of age high school it's just i cannot wait and like it takes you through recipe by recipe i'm really obsessed with it so i'm gonna just start rereading volumes one and two probably and then get to volumes three and four so that is kitchen princess oh my god i'm so happy Half a soul. I don't like how this one smells. This is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. So I bought this one. I am a little apprehensive because I've heard good and bad things. So Half a Soul 
is I think pitched as Bridgerton meets Howl's Moving Castle. I don't like Bridgerton, but I love Howl's Moving Castle. We're gonna see how this goes because it's set in the marriage market of, I don't know, the, oh, it is set in London, in the London season, but in this marriage market, in the society, fairies and fae exist. So it makes this whole thing much more complicated. Ever since she was cursed by a fairy, she has no sense of fear or embarrassment. And this like condition of not being able to be embarrassed, not being able to feel shame, it gets her into a lot of sticky situations. So at the start of the season, she's embroiled in yet another scandal, which I guess doesn't make her very, it, ripe for the marriage market. So it's historical fantasy, which I really haven't read a lot of, and like eventually she does start to spend more and more time with this guy called Elias, and she's like, can I love someone with half a soul? I don't know why she has half a soul. Prologue. Theodora Eloisa Charity Eddings was a very long name for a very small girl. Okay, that's charming. It's charming. It's off to a charming start. So that is half a soul. I would have chose I would have chosen a darker green for the cover, but that's just me. Okay, this one is very hefty. Ooh, it's a hard, it's a hardback, I can tell. I never buy hardbacks, so this might be something I'm very excited about. Oh my god. Oh my god, it is. Oh my god, it's in my hands. Okay, so let me preface this by saying Heather Fawcett. First of all, check this out. Oh my god, maybe I should start buying hardcover books more often. Okay, so Heather Fawcett um, has written one of my favorite books of the year so far that I read, and that is Ember and the Ice Dragons. I loved it, I gave that book five stars, and now like she has a whole bunch of books out, but Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies is her newest release, and um, I snatched it up. Heather Fawcett's writing, at least in Ember and the Ice Dragons, was... Fantastic, beautiful, charming, uh, loved it to pieces. So whimsical, the perfect combination of everything. Such a talent. So I'm hoping Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which is pitched as light academia, field work, studying fairies, I don't know. Okay, my best friend when I was younger had those fairy books with all the different colored fairies. Like there was a fairy for literally everything. They were very much children's books. I was so envious and I wanted them so badly. There was like Cloud Fairy. I don't I think they all had cute little names. I'll put it here, but like I wanted this so badly. Emily Wilde is the foremost expert on the study of fairies. This also reminds me of like those books that you, like other kids have them at school too. They're always at the book fair. They were like demonology or angelology, piratology, you know those like really big Hardcover books with stunning illustrations, dragonology. That's what this reminds me of, but like an actual novel. Emily Wilde is good at fairies, but not good at people. So when she arrives in the hard scrabble, that's a nice word, village of Hafschmick, Emily has no intention of befriending the gruff townsfolk. And she also has an academic rival, academic rivals to lovers. It's about her arriving in this town as like a field researcher um, and then having to deal with her academic rival who is there and who she obviously wants to be and be a better fairy. A scholar and it's also set in the early 1900s by the way so anyway so basically I want to buy every book Heather Fawcett is written is like the takeaway of this but this is the one that I picked up so let's do another little one just kidding just kidding this is for a different video Ooh. okay all right all right these are beautiful why don't they make they need to make just as beautiful books for like adults but like this is so gorgeous okay this is wild spark look look it smells good this might be the best smelling one yet okay so wild spark i have had this on my wish list as well for a while when i saw it on book depository and book depository was closing i was like i might as well so this is in a world you follow this young girl but like the thing that was interesting me about this one is that there are like robot animals who i think contain the soul of their person in medlock okay medlock is a wonderful name machines don't come to life life comes to machines like i think when people die their spirit inhabits these machines and they become like trapped in these animatronic animal bodies but like she's trying to find her brother who has become like a living machine i don't know it just sounds really 
unique, very interesting, and kind of heartbreaking. So this is Wild Spark by Vashti Hardy. Chapter one, The Stranger. On the bright side of the valley, 10 furrows from Lane End and some 20 furlongs from the village of North Alcott, in a place where the great metal city of Medlock was just a dream, there was a small farm. 10 out of 10, love that first sentence, love it. So that is Wild Spark. Recently, I've been in a pretty big middle grade mood. Oh, okay, I forgot about this one. <gasps> she floppy, she floppy. Mm, it's giving stomach bile. Okay, weird. Okay, so I picked up A Company of Swans by Ava Ibbotson, Ibbotson, Eva Ibbotson. This has been on my Goodreads to read shelf since 2013. And I thought, you know what? It's about damn, it's about damn time. It's about damn time. I went through a huge ballet phase when I was a teenager, so that's why it was on my shelf. But the thing about this one, the thing about this one is that we have this young woman who accepts a role in this ballet, this ballet group, this ballet company, but they are pretty much, I think, acquired, like they sign up, they start their careers, but they are signing up to perform in South America, I think? on a tour of the Amazon. It's set in Brazil and like deep in the Amazon rainforest, this crazy Englishman has created this huge theater. Um, he's created this whole place for people to come. Like it's a really beautiful structure in the middle of the Amazon. So like it's a pretty arduous journey to get there, but he's like, people are gonna dance ballet in the damn rainforest. It just sounds so, I can just see it. I feel like I can already see it in my mind. I haven't even started reading. It's set in 1912 and Harriet has lived her whole life under the strict rule of her widowed father. Harriet, like she's recruited by, what's his name, Henry? No, Rom, Rom. They start to have a little bit of a romance as well. It seems, it's giving me like it's gonna be a little bit sinister. I don't know why I think it's gonna turn into a sinister kind of story, but I just feel like it is. So that's a company of swans. I've heard nothing about this book from anyone else. Chapter one. There was no lovelier view in England. Harriet knew this. Okay, really quickly, we have another book that I've already read, but I liked it so much I wanted to own it. And that is From Little Tokyo with Love by Sarah Kuhn. I love this book. I read this book, I listened to the audiobook last summer and I really enjoyed it. This is one of those rare contemporary young adults as well, might I add, romances that I really thoroughly enjoyed. Um, it was really sweet and I kind of just took it in stride, the elements that I don't usually like, like miscommunication, maybe a little bit too juvenile of events happening. I just kind of liked In Little Tokyo with Love because this one is about Rika. She has massive anger issues, but she also feels very abandoned and betrayed because she doesn't know who her mother is or where her mother is. This all changes when this very famous actress comes into town for the festival into um, Little Tokyo. And she's like, that woman has the exact same face as me. And then she's like, oh my God, my mom is a movie star. Why did she abandon me? At the same time that she bumps into Hank Chen, who is an actor as well, and they start to like kind of team up. They're searching for her mom together. They go on a tour of Little Tokyo. It felt like a scavenger hunt. It felt like an adventure. It felt really sweet. I could like see it all, picture it all. It's a perfect summer read and it was just, I don't know, it was just honestly a delight. So I wanted to read it again. Read it for myself. Once upon a time, a beautiful princess lived in the magical kingdom of Los Angeles. And I really like the romance as well. Uh oh. This one should be interesting because I don't know if I'm gonna like this or not. As you can see, this is Twisted Games by Anna Huang. Um, this is making the rounds. It has become a TikTok book, I'm pretty sure. But I wanted to do um, another one of my romance reading blogs. Twisted Games is part of a series that you can read out of order. There's Twisted Hate, Twisted Love, and Twisted Games. Twisted Games sounded like it was the one that I was going to enjoy the most because I think this is a romance between a princess and her bodyguard. Bodyguard? We have Reese. The amount I've heard about this man but never having read about him is a little bit insane. He has two rules. Protect his clients and do not become emotionally involved. It opens with a playlist. Books that open with a playlist, I feel like I don't ever trust. I don't know, I haven't had good experiences with books that open with playlists. One Direction, they don't know about us. This is the last book on this pile over here. Oh, I bought this. Oh, this is, oh. What in the hell is this cover? Who designed this? It's Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. But first of all, 
Okay, so I've seen, here's the thing. I've heard about this on booktube. That's why I bought it. Booktube made me do it. Um, yes, I work here, but I also am a booktube customer. Um, I've heard so many people talk about Magnolia Parks. I've seen so many people hold this book up and like the cover did not look that disgusting to me, but when you get closer, what is this? What, what is this? And then the back does not Matt, I'm confused. It looks like Disney animation crossed with really bad Photoshop. So Magnolia Parks is like described all the time as Gossip Girl in like high English society. I started watching Gossip Girl, like the original one, a couple years ago and I actually really liked it just for like, it was just so easy to watch, so easy to watch, so fun. And like you get a mad dose of the early 2000s. So. We're gonna see, I like know full well going into Magnolia Parks that this is gonna be outlandish, ridiculous, toxic as hell, and I'm really here for it because this follows like just two people who hate and love each other. We, what's her name? Magnolia. Her name is Magnolia, it's called Magnolia Parks. Um, but the fact that the love interest name is BJ Ballantyne, how many loves do you get in a lifetime? I don't know. I mean, how many cats can you buy? I'll probably read this in the same blog as twisted games okay this one ominously has number 46 on it what does it mean another one i'm very apprehensive about guild guild by raven kennedy um can you believe it? i think got picked up by penguin that's really cool because this is a self-published originally romance um that is a retelling of king midas sounds really interesting i have tried to read guild twice twice now once on kindle Oh, and second time also on Kindle. I just couldn't get into it, but once I heard that like it's more, the first book is a ton of like background and fantasy and not too much fantasy romance because it is fantasy romance, it's dark romance, um, but I don't, I've heard that like it doesn't really start until at least book two. So it is slow burn as hell, which is nice because when I was reading it for the first time, I thought that the love interest was King Midas but I don't think that it actually is. She has been touched by King Midas, so she is gold. She's literally like, I don't know how that really works. Is she all gold or is it just like a gold varnish or veneer on her skin, I think? Anyway, King Midas, I think, took her off of the streets because she was like so pretty and then he made her into gold and she's essentially just an ornament in his castle, like she lives in a cage. But the kingdom that he's king of, like it's not going really well, there's rumors of war and so when I think the um, adjacent king, the adjacent kingdom, comes to visit, she gets lumped in as part of the bargain to appease this king to like, you know, make them allies so her life changes again. <laughs> Speaking of really hyped up things. So when I filmed, when I did, when I uploaded my Shatter Me vlog, um, you guys really liked it. Thank you so much for all of the kind things you had to say, for loving it, for watching it, for sitting through an hour of 40 minutes, an hour and 40 minutes of me blabbing. But a lot of you commented that you want more vlog series like that, where I read very hyped, popular books and just kind of see what happens. Um, and obviously the most requested one was Akatar. Here we are. Here we are, the Court of Thorns. And, oh, the print is so tiny. Who would do such a thing? So you know what it is. You heard of it. You've maybe probably read it. I listened to the audiobook of this about like two or three years ago. It was just okay. We're gonna go back, revisit, relive together. And I'm gonna make a whole in-depth vlog about this because like this, like Sarah J Maas has I mean, you can't argue that she's changed the landscape of fantasy romance especially, but also fantasy. I mean, Akatar is one of the biggest things happening, fortunately or unfortunately, in publishing for the past few years. Like, people have just been picking everyone. Everyone and their mother and their father. We're just gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna go into it, kind of try to go into it with an open mind, clear my... First, I can't not me saying that and then me seeing the map. Uh, this is the stupidest map I've ever seen. This is just not how geology works. Chapter one, the forest had become a labyrinth of snow and ice. It smells like pumpkin. It smells like when you're carving a pumpkin and you get like that very dank, raw, pumpkin seed, pumpkin flesh smell. Interesting. We're really going on a fantasy romance kick right now. <laughs> so this one, oh, how did I find you? This one I found by myself. Oh, you know what I did? I just, I type in winter a lot 
on book buying websites because I'm like that in love with books about winter and snow and like if there's winter in the title it means I probably want to read it. So this is The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. I first saw this and like I was very put off by this cover because let's be honest it's a little... is it ugly actually? I don't actually mind it that much. It just looks like something that I would see on my grandma's coffee table. I love you grandma. That's not a... you read some fire books. I just wasn't fully like convinced but I've heard that this is like amazing. Like the reviews I've read specifically were like, do not pay attention to the cover. Like this is an amazing, plotted, beautifully rendered, really amazing fantasy romance. So I mean, I have really, really high hopes now. Um, and it's quite long. We have the king who is, his name is literally Winter. And he wants to have his vengeance after this war is over on like the summer king. Um, and he's gonna take one of the man's beautiful beloved daughters as his bride. But though peace is finally at hand, Winter's battle with the ice heart, the dread power he embraced to avenge his brother's death rages on. I think there's gonna be a lot of character building and relationship growth. Prologue, Scarlet on Snow. Do you have to go? 17 year old Camson clung to her beloved brother's hand as if by her grip alone she could anchor him fast and keep him from leaving. Okay, it smells very fresh. So that is the winter king. We'll see how it goes. Let's just get this out of the way. Holy chungus. I didn't know Court of Wings and Ruin was this long. I'm also really confused on the order in which to read Akatar because like I know there is the, tr oh it's not even a trilogy is it? And then there's like other books. I'm just gonna have to look it up is what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to look it up. I think this is the third book though. They couldn't have picked, honestly, they couldn't have picked uglier colors for the covers in my opinion. Okay, I don't wanna spoil myself, but there she is. What I do have high hopes for and what I'm really excited to read um, is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I am so excited to read this. I love, I'm like matching with the cover today. But Once Upon a Broken Heart, oh, and the spine. Gorgeous. Okay, so I read Caraval in like three years ago. Really liked Caraval, didn't like the second one, and DNF'd the last one. So we're gonna see how this goes. I know this is like at least a trilogy now, but this is set in this. Okay. This is set in the same world, and like you don't necessarily have to read Caraval, but you could. It's about this girl who has her heart broken and she makes this deal with the king of hearts is for for revenge or no oh, it's to stop the wedding of the boy who broke her heart because he's getting married now so the king, the king of hearts agrees but like his thing is like you he had you have to repay him in kisses we'll see how it oh beautiful mute beautiful chapter one the bell hanging outside the curiosity shop knew the human was trouble from the way he moved through the door oh bells have excellent hearing but this little chime didn't need any particular skill to catch the crude jangle of the gaudy pocket watch chain at this young man's hip, or the rough scrape of his boots as he attempted a swagger, but only succeeded in scuffing the floor. The last book, Scarred. <laughs> this is another book that I've already read, but I wanted to own it. I read this on Kindle. This is a Lion King romance <laughs> retelling. Emily McIntyre writes um, fantasy romance Disney retellings so this one is about scar but like he's not scar and he's not a lion you know i don't know i liked it i wanted to own it it was a little bit comforting it was nice and i would like to read it for myself because i feel like when i read on kindle i don't know i feel like sometimes i miss pages or something i don't know if that's true and it's also about like the villain like most of her disney retellings like center around the villain and it also starts with a quote from Hamlet, which is all- oh right, that does check out because Lion King is like a re rehashing of Hamlet. And this is rehashing of the Lion King, which is a rehashing of Hamlet. This actually also has a lot of Hamlet references, which I'm just now remembering. So if you like either or the other, Lion King is actually, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a masterpiece, honestly. So that is my book haul. Thank you for coming out. I have, I have the biggest headache now, so I'm gonna go I go lay down. I'm excited for you to see some upcoming vlogs I have with these in mind and until my next video I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're having a good day. Um, that's when I will see you. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hauling some books with me and ciao!